I don't know what, like, I don't know. I feel like, I feel like Kobe Bryant, one of them guys that is like, he's like really super down to earth, but to the point where it's like, you just can't make up a conversation. Like, it gotta probably be something real. Like, not no small talk or something like that. What's up, world? It's your boy Overtime Sam, and you're watching OTTV. Yeah, how y'all doing today? Um, I go by the name of Marlo. Uh, yeah, as far as uh, Kobe Bryant, man, um, you know, you know, we got a few people. Like I won't say few people, but you know, like back in the day, like black people, we had a lot of leaders, and you know, people that was you know, this plan, basically dedication and and just. The, the love for just striving to be better and just to, to be great and just do things to make others inspired. And, you know, Kobe Bryant was one of those people for us, man. Like, a lot of these kids, you know, that, that grew up fatherless, man, like, Kobe Bryant was, was the man. You feel me? Like, that was the guy that, you know, if you like basketball, you know, you know, it, it was a couple, you know, it was definitely Kobe haters because it's just like, you know, he played for the Lakers. You know, a lot of people didn't like the Lakers, you know, you know, because they was always winning and shit. So, I mean, I understand that. But Kobe Bryant, it was, he just transcended just the whole, like, uh, I don't like this NBA player or I don't like this NBA team because it was just like, you just had to respect it. Like, I was a super big Allen Iverson fan, but one of the, one of the games that I can like, kind of remember the most like at, in my when i was younger like you know it was the, the 2001 finals um and ai playing against kobe and it's just like you know i'm thinking like ai got it man like he got it like you know they played that first game he, you know he stepped over Ty Lu and shit like that like he realized did his thing and i'm just like kobe just didn't let that shit happen though and it's just like damn bro like it's just like the nigga's great. Like, he's just great, bruh. And it's just like, I didn't really realize how great he was until he retired, man. That's what makes, that's the biggest kill. I didn't realize how great he was until he retired because this nigga went into the creative arts, bruh, and, and got an Oscar. He got an Academy Award, bruh. Like, even if you're not an NBA fan, bruh, you could just be a, a fan of art, bruh. Like, this man did something that a lot of artists have never even done yet. Like he's achieved something to the highest, to the highest degree of, of what he could possibly get it at. And it's just like it just shows you the level of dedication and, and 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 passion that he has for whatever he puts his mind to. And it just lets you know it's not it wasn't just about basketball. It's not that he just was a gifted basketball player. Like he was really just an intelligent person and he just applied that to basketball and it's just like it's like when you just know something is great and you just know it's bigger than what people say it is it's just like you going respect it you going be drawn into it so when he passed away that's why it was such a big outpouring of people just in mourning because it's just like a lot of people love this guy because they really respected him. Like, even in the midst of his life, you know, he, you know, he, as loved as he was, he he drew a lot of hate. Like I said again, whether it just came to personal shit or just basketball, period, or just you know, just his character or whatever. But it's like he, like that mama mentality, bro. Like that was basically the mentality of having. Like I don't care what anybody. Thinks. I don't care what anybody thinks. Like, I only care about what my family thinks. When I found out about Kobe Bryant dying, it, it's crazy because, you know, not 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 even a year ago, Nipsey Hussle died, and it was on a Sunday. I remember that. And I was in my room, like, just chilling, playing the game. And it's the same thing this time. It was just the same thing. And I was just blown away. And I think what really make what really make it like sad for people 
And what really makes it sad about his death is, you know, when a lot of people die, like artists or something like that, it makes it like, uh, like when Nipsey Hussle got shot, right? It would say Nipsey Hussle shot. So everybody's thinking like, okay, like he might live. Like there's no, okay, there's a possibility that he might live. You know, you know, of course, as the news uh, broke further, of course we realized, all right, it was really bad. And then they announced that he was dead. With the Kobe Bryant thing, with the Kobe Bryant uh, death, it was literally like TMZ. Kobe Bryant passed away. And it's like, whoa. Like, it's like, it don't even give you no time to like, to even think like, damn, like, is Kobe gonna pull through? No, he's gone. Like, already, there's nothing. It's nothing there for you to feel any type of hope with. And at this point, it got so sad that the only silver lining that we were trying to get was the fact that it said that it was him and four other people initially. So people just automatically was thinking, was his family on board? So that was the, like, he was gone already. The only thing that we could, the only thing that we could draw to to feel some type of, like, oh, I feel good, was to think, like, hopefully his family wasn't on board. And the media outlets was so geeking to just put out a story and a hell out before fact-checking uh, shit that they said that his family was on board. But when they, and then they said Rick Fox was on board. And then it was came out that it was more people. And then it was confirmed that Gianna was on there and that crushed me the most. Oh my God. Do you realize that like as a dad, right? As a dad, I would never want to see my son cut short due to a due to something that I feel like I brought upon my I brought upon myself. Like like if I like to ride helicopters, right? And you know, I've been doing that for 20 years and my son is on board with me and we crash. The only thing in my mind would be I don't care if I die. Like it's I don't want my son to die. And Kobe Bryant and Gianna on board that helicopter, I know that is what he initially, I know that's what he, all that he thought. I knew that in his head, he was like, this is the, it's the end, it's the end for us. And you know what? It might've been really quick too. Like, I, I, I don't want to put that, you know, I don't want to just have that expectation when they it said that they found him still holding her wrapped around her, his arms. She was still in his arms when they found their bodies. Are you serious? Yo, look. I didn't. I didn't even know. I didn't even know that his, you know, his arms were still wrapped around her body. And it's just like that's what I'm saying. Like you know, we're going down. But it's just like I know he's thinking. Like I'm so mad at myself because now I'm I'm cutting my daughter's life short. The one that was going to continue my legacy. The one that was going to go to the WNBA. Like the one that was going to be the, the next, the, the 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 heir to Kobe Bryant, and she's at 13 years old. She's gone, and it's because they're going to basketball practice. It, it's like Kobe Bryant died because he was just being a good dad, you know, taking his her, his daughter to, to practice, and then the other people that was on board. It, it was just like it was just added, just just sadness to that situation, and. I just feel as though we just took a great loss with this one because it was just like, you know, that was one of our good ones. Honestly, if you feel like you got to cry, cry, I cried. I cried about it, you know. I cried about it. Like, you know, feel how you feel about it. Feel it. It's real. People die. Even the people that we think is invincible. Like, I think that should make us think about our own mortality. But... Of course, we should never just, you know, remember people for how they die. We need to just remember them for how they live. So, Kobe Bryant accomplished a lot. And one thing I'm really grateful for, and I know the fans and his family is grateful for, is the fact that I feel like that he definitely got his flowers while he was here. Because he retired just three years ago. And that's another story within itself. It's just sad that my man couldn't even... 
live a, a, the great life of retirement. Like he was really about to live his best life, and he didn't get to do it. Like we seen Kobe Bryant get into the NBA at 17 years old. He played for 20 years. We practically seen this man do basketball more than we seen him do anything else. He literally lived only three more years after he retired. So really think about that. Half his life was occupied with basketball. Like that is it's it's just like we seen this man grow up in front of our eyes, so it, it hurts us. But it, we have a lot of video, a lot of footage, a lot of quotes, a lot of everything and stuff that to discover more as far as Kobe Bryant that we got to remember him by and I feel as though that you know now he's immortalized or right? he's a legend he's already a legend but this is just this is just the it's just it made it certified check me out on youtube.com backslash this is Marlo um look at my director page youtube.com backslash sensei creative um